Hello YouTube, this is uh, my 1980 Datsun 280ZX and I'm going to show you how to replace a stripped wheel stud or lug um, on this back driver side wheel. Uh, first thing we're going to do is jack it up so we can take the wheel off and we'll go from there. Alright, so now we've got the car jacked up, um, chocks on the front wheels. And uh, jack stands would be recommended, but since we're not going under the car, they're not necessarily required. Um, for a, this is a Datsun 280ZX. If you're watching it and you own a Datsun, um, what I do is I drive the car up on these little wooden blocks, uh, so you can get the jack under there and move the handle freely. Um, it's pretty simple. And then we're just going to take the wheel off, take the brake uh, calipers off, the brake pads out, and then take the brake rotor out, and then we'll be able to access the messed up uh, wheel stud or lug. Um, if you know how to do all those things already, then you can just skip ahead, but if not, uh, keep watching. Alright, start by taking the wheel off. Pretty simple. You can see the this lug is all stripped the first uh, three eighths of an inch or so, um, where the other ones have threads that go all the way to the end. I apologize for the video quality. Um, I don't do this to make money or anything, just to help out other people who like to do things themselves like me. That being said, I am no professional, uh, so anything I suggest is do at your own risk, but should work. Um, so you'll notice it doesn't turn because I had the uh, emergency brake on, so release the emergency brake because you'll never be able to get anything off with it on. Um, we're going to start, take out these, um, the brake pads, and then take off the brake caliper. Um, to do that, I suggest getting a bungee cord or something to hold it in place. So you can wrap bungee cord around it and the coil spring um, because there's a hard line, hard brake line right here that you can bend a little bit, but you don't want to like set it on the ground because you'll get a big kink and have to replace it and bleed the, bleed the brake lines and it's a whole mess. Alright so getting the brake pads out is actually really easy. You just take out these two collar pins. Don't lose them right there. Um, this is a good time that you can assess your brake pad wear. Um, but you're just gonna take those two collar pins out slide out these two pins uh, don't lose any of that hardware and then it might be a little bit stuck but if you just kind of pull on it you can wiggle out the brake pads there's one Two. Um, they might get stuck occasionally when you put them back in you've got these little nubs that line up with these grooves on the brake caliper and you can just grab a screwdriver and twist if it doesn't line up um, yeah then the next step is you'll be kind of hard to see Right here, there's one of the bolts. There's another one just like it down below. I believe they're 17 or 18 millimeter. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you a variety of techniques to get out. If you have a, a wheel stud that looks like that, where it's stripped the last little bit, or if it's broken off, or 
I don't know. Something's wrong with it for some reason. Now, this car is like most cars and it has what's called a stud. So the back side is just pressed in there. Uh, on, I believe, some older Hondas and maybe some other cars, there's a, a nut on the other side that you can just unscrew, in which case this video is not for you. Uh, that's just like a normal bolt. Uh, but I'll show you how to use a variety of techniques. Um, and if you don't have another car that you can run to the auto parts store with, uh, watch the whole video before taking the wheels off your car. All right, so we've got our brake caliper off. It's suspended by some bungee cord so it doesn't go too far because that can damage this brake hard line. Um, next, you're going to take your brake rotor off. Um, if you have drum brakes, that's going to be a little bit different, but pretty much the same. Uh, this, this one has these little holes that you can screw in a bolt and then I'll pull the whole thing off. Um, but usually if you just tap it a couple times with a hammer or something, um, you can just wiggle it loose. So I'll take that off. Alright, so we've got the rotor off. And now if you look on the back side, there are just going to be these round, you know, it's kind of like the top of a bolt, but it's round. Um, now how it works is these are press fit into this part. There are little grooves uh, on the lug itself, and they hold it in place and prevent it from turning. And you first, your first step is usually going to be um, just tapping it a few times with a hammer, like this one, or um, a dead blow. Um, now, I'd give it a few firm, firm tap. Um, probably, you know four or five, which I did yesterday when I was trying to diagnose this. Uh, but if it doesn't move at all, uh, you should just move on to other things because hammering too hard can damage your wheel bearing if you just are up in here. And so next thing that I tried is a simple C-clamp, which is uh, pretty similar to what we're going to do later. And so all you do is you get a socket, you put it around this, the back side of the lug nut. So it's, it's not fixed on there, you can turn it, but that's what you're gonna put the C-clamp on. All right, so this is how it looks. You just have the C-clamp on here, pushes the lug out through here, into the cavity that's in the socket. But, uh, and this one is pretty stuck on there. This method didn't work. So your next step for most people is going to be heating this up with a blowtorch. Um, make sure you heat the whole thing evenly because otherwise it might cause problems. Um, but that didn't help me either. So I came up with a new solution, which I'll show next. All right, so this is what I think will work. Now, I haven't tried this before, but it should work. So this here is a ball joint slash U-joint service kit that you can borrow from any AutoZone. Um, it's a really nice system. You just give them a deposit. They give you the tools. You have them for as long as you need, and then whenever you're done, you give them back. So. That's what it looks like in there. This should be right there. And this is what we're gonna use. And you'll notice it looks a lot like a C-clamp because it pretty much is a C-clamp, but it's really big and it's got this nice hexagon on the bottom so we can put a socket on it. Now, we're just gonna put it around here. You'll notice because it's got thicker walls um, than that socket I was using earlier doesn't go all the way flush so got this wrench I'm gonna place around it as a spacer because if this rests on the back side of the lug it won't do anything you won't push anything out you'll just crush the lug um, 
So I'll get this set up because I can't do it with one hand and I'll be back. All right, so here's my setup. Um, this is the closest thing you're gonna get to a hydraulic press, which is what they would use at any mechanic shop. But Pep Boys said it would cost them $250 to do this, uh, which is ridiculous because this little part only costs a dollar and that's the only part that's wrong. And so we're gonna do it for free with a couple tools around just lying around anyone's shop. So we've got this all set up. I have this wrench set as a spacer. Um, this is just hand tight. It's going against here. So this can just push straight through there. The wrench was not working out. So I used a piece of steel and a piece of acrylic that I just cut some holes in to get a perfect spacer in there and then I'll put this around it and pop that out. Alright, so it popped right out. Um, it was really easy once I got it all set up. Uh, and this is what they look like. They've got these little grooves in here that are going to compress into there. Um, now you just go to any art apart store and pick up a new one of those. Um, now if it's stripped, you might want to double check and make sure you don't need a new lug nut as well. Um, so I'm going to run to the auto parts store. I recommend bringing the lug that you just took out with you to make sure you get the exact right size and everything. Here's the new wheel lug or wheel stud. Fits in there nicely. Uh, now to put it in you're going to use a lug nut, a washer, and some sort of spacer like this box end wrench. So you just slip that over, washer on, and screw on the lug nut until it is fully compressed in like the other ones. And that's it. Put everything back together and you're good.